ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه اما بعد يا عباد الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون we praise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this day, for giving us life, another day, to witness His oneness through our belief and through our action and our prayers and in our fasting. And I advise you and I advise myself to have taqwa of Allah, to have fear of Allah and to observe the limits, the hudud that He has placed down. Obeying the commands outwardly and inwardly and staying away from the, the prohibitions outwardly and inwardly. Dear brothers and sisters, respected elders, one of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given in this creation are sacred times, sacred places, and even sacred numbers. We are right now in a sacred time, Ramadan, where the rewards are increased if you do good actions and the sins are increased, the punishment for the sins are increased if you do wrong actions. We are in a sacred place, a masjid, where if you do good actions, your reward is increased. And if you do prohibited actions, your punishment would be increased. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for all of our sins. Amen. On this day, over 1400 years ago, on the 17th of Ramadan, this day, the 17th of Ramadan, on a Jum'ah, it fell on a Jum'ah, one of the greatest events that has ever graced the face of the earth occurred. Badr. The battle of Badr, the greatest victory in all of history, where the Prophet ﷺ took his first stance with the armies. There were previous armies that he sent out, but this was the first time he fought in the army. And the clash was against Quraysh. And it wasn't just a clash of armies, it was a cr clash of truth against falsehood. Haq against Baqir. And on that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave victory to the Muslims. And He gave victory to the entire Ummah and He showed all of humanity what the truth is through Badr. <coughs> that event occurred, but to us it's not just a historical event. It's part of our belief. We believe in Badr. It's in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ali Imran, لَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمْ فِي بَدْرِ Allah has given you victory in Badr. وَأَنْتُمْ أَذِلَّهِ And you were few in numbers. فَاتَّقُوا الله. And so have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you may do shukr, so that you can have shukr, so that you can thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he gave us this victory. He gave us, all of us. If it wasn't for Badr, we wouldn't be here today. On that day before the battle began, the Prophet ﷺ raised his hands high and he started making dua to Allah on this day, brothers and sisters. This Jum'ah, the 17th of Ramadan, making dua in the middle of the heat. We think it's hot here, fasting at 85, 90 degrees. Imagine the Saudi Arabian Peninsula, the Arabian Peninsula in the summertime and they're fasting about to engage the enemy and he's making dua sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he's asking Allah that if you don't give victory to us then we will be wiped out and you won't be worshipped for this day, through this faith. And he kept making the dua and making the dua and making the dua and making the dua sallallahu alayhi wasallam until his shoulder cloth, his ridat fell down. And his hands were held so high that the Sahaba could see the whiteness of his underarms. Raising his hands in dua to, the, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu came and lifted up his ridat and put it back on his shoulders. And he said, you've done enough dua. You've given enough ilha, you know, uh, seriousness in your dua. And one of the Sahaba later, he said on that day, he felt a wind so severe, he had never felt it before. And then it stopped. 
And then another wind came that he hadn't felt anything as severe before except the wind that came before, and then it stopped. And then a third time. The first was Jibreel alayhi salam descending with 1,000 angels. The second was Mikael alayhi salam with another 1,000 angels. And the third was Israfil alayhi salam with another 1,000 angels. And Allah gave us, gave us 3,000 of His angels, of His malaika, to fight with the Muslims on that day. And never before and never again will that happen. The angels can come with the Muslims, but they only fought at Badr. And to the point that the Sahaba would look at a person and the person would be annihilated and nobody was around him. And some of the Quraysh saw these men that they said, these men of light coming in. And one of the Sahaba later on, when long afterwards, one of the Bedris, one of the veterans of that great victory. He said, I'm blind now, but if you take me to that battlefield, I can show you the valleys where they charged in from. The angels coming to defend the Muslims and to defend this truth and to establish this deen so we can be here today to fast and to witness the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to, and to pray and to be Muslim from that small group of people given those angels. That small group of people were 314. And this is a special number. I mentioned in the beginning Allah gives sacred numbers. 314. Some say 313. But 314, what's that the number of as well? The number of the messengers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent 124 or 125,000 prophets, but only 314 were messengers. The greatest of all human beings, the messengers, they numbered 314. It was as if there was one representative of each one of those messengers on that battlefield of Badr. Allah showing the humanity. Those aren't just regular Muslims on that day. They are each representing one of the messengers in their number. They're not regular Muslims. And the Muslims took this to heart that those were special people. And even after, long after that, the Badris were always known. And they were given a stipend from Bayt al-Mal. Umar anhu established the veteran's benefit. He gave the Bedri veteran a specific stipend. He gave the Uhudi a specific stipend. But the Bedris were always known. To the point that it's mentioned when the last Bedri was passed away. And it's interesting because when the last Bedri, when the last of the surviving veterans from that day passed away, the first Muslim civil war began. Those people were special people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given us so that we could be here today. 314 is also the number of the army of Balut. Balut was the king who was chosen by the Prophet at that time to lead Bani Israel back into the land of Palestine to kill Goliath. And Dawood alayhi salam and his two brothers were amongst that army. The, uh, the story is found in Surah Al-Baqarah. I encourage you to read it and read it to your children and understand it because it has a very, the same exact meaning. 950 Qurayshis, totally outfitted, stallions, money, armor, weapons, 314 Muslims, a, a limited number of swords, two horses, two horses for an army. What does that show us? That the Nasr, our victory, doesn't come from our outward things. It doesn't come from our armor. It doesn't come from our steeds. It doesn't come from our numbers. It comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهِ That Allah gave you Nasr, He gave you victory in Badr. It wasn't your weapons. It wasn't your numbers. The army of Talut were 70,000. At first, and then he said, "Inna Allah mubtalikum binaha." Allah is giving you a tribulation of a river, the Jordan River. That when the army comes to it, he said, "Qadud." Alayhi salam said, "He's not a prophet, but we can say, Radiallahu anhu or Alayhi salam about him." He said that 
Allah is giving you this tribulation of a river, don't drink from it as a test. Except for one handful. And it turned out that that one handful would have quenched their thirst. But out of that 70,000, almost all of them drank from the river, except illa qalila minhu. Except for a few of them, qalil. 314. And on that day, even those 314, when they stepped out and they saw Goliath, the giant, with his armor and his army and their armor and their numbers and their technological advancements and everything they had and their small numbers. And they said, we can't, we can't win. And some of the ones that believed that had true yaqeen, true faith, said, how many times, كم من فئة قليلة? How many times will a small group beat a large group? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Dawood alayhi salam kill Goliath with a pebble. And then the army rushed away. 314 on that day. And on that day too, in where the Muslims or the, the, the Muslims under Balut and with Dawood alayhi salam, where they beat Goliath at that place. Generations later, the Muslims beat the Mongol invasion at that place. So brothers and sisters, this is the lesson that we should get from these stories. They're not just stories, these happenings, these events, these amazing events that have happened in society. What we take from them are lessons. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not mentioning these things in vain. He's not mentioning these for no reason. There is a reason for the mentioning of these stories. There's a mentioning for the stories of the prophets. Why? So that we can relate it to our lives. And all of the stories of the prophet, we can relate it to our lives. And all of the seerah, there are aspects where we can relate it to our lives. That's why it's important to read the seerah. Much of the Quran is essentially seerah. Is Allah telling us what happened in Mecca, what happened in Medina, what happened with the Munafiqeen, what happened with the Sahaba, what happened with the Quraysh, what happened with Ahlul Kitab, the people of the book. All of these things, he's telling us these stories. What happened with Yusuf salam? what happened with Dawood? How do we relate that to our lives? How do we relate Badr? That battle, that victory, how do we relate it to our lives? One of the ways that we relate it to our lives is to remember that Nasr, that victory and success and Tawfiq is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not from our dunya. It's not from our material possessions. It's not from our achievements. How many times have high school dropouts achieved to become millionaires? Or, or college dropouts become billionaires? And the most educated people are on welfare. How does that happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave something to one person and He chose to not to give it to another person. So how do we relate that to us? Don't depend on your things. We should not depend on our things. We don't depend on our jobs for income. We depend on Rabb al-Alameen. As soon as we depend on that paycheck, or depend on that person that's supporting us, then we've lost our izzah. And we've lost our iman, we've lost our dignity, and we've lost our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not totally, but it's been diminished. As soon as we we think that the risk, that the sustenance is coming from that person, from that thing, then we're, we've made a problem in our faith, in our depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the Muslims at Badr looked at their horses and they said, we can't win with two horses, we can't win with 70 camels, seven zero, 70 camels, that's all we have, two or three soldiers per, per camel, we can't win with a few swords, with a few weapons, some, some armor, when we're facing Quraysh, the top tribe, the top city in the Arabian Peninsula amongst the Arabs. Quraysh comes from the word Qirsh, which means shark. That they're just like the shark can go through the oceans and doesn't fear the other fish. That's how Quraysh used to go through the Arabian Peninsula. And that's how they used to deal with people. They didn't fear anybody, just like the great white sharks swimming through the ocean. And now this small group of farmers, the Ansar were farmers, with military experience, but they were mostly farmers, are going to face Quraysh. But it was because the victory came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when it comes to our lives, 
When it comes to a point where we have to make a decision, do I take that job or not? We should make it based on an, inform an informed decision. An informed decision. The informed decision is that we know that it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we don't have to take that job first. And that will give us izzah, that will give us dignity. So when we look at it, we say, I will only take this if Allah would be pleased with it. And then when our peers tell us, or our spouse tells us, or our children tell us, no, no, you can't leave that job, you won't get an income. The nasr is from Allah, victory is from Allah, your income is from Allah. Or when it comes time in Ramadan, and a common question that we experience, can I break my fast to study for my exams? Can I break my fast because I'm in medical school and it's very hectic? And the parents will say, yes, go ahead. Where is the nasr? Where are they looking for the nasr from? Where are they looking for the victory? Are you looking for the food? The food is your victory? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will leave you to the food. But if you look for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will give you barakah, He will give you benefit from where you don't even see it. Just like the Badris on that day got reinforcements from the angels because they defend, depended on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, us too, you too, will get reinforcements from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you depend on Him and you follow His orders. The Badris followed the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He gave them victory. If we break our fast because because of a test, where's our nasr coming from? If we take off our hijab, because people will look at us in a funny way, where is our nasr coming from? Allah will lead you to that. You want to depend on the dunya? Allah will give you to the dunya. You want to depend on Allah? Allah will give you everything you need. When it comes time to pray, we're on our job, we're at our school, but we don't want to get up and pray because, oh, those people might say something funny about me. I don't want to go and do wudu in the bathroom because people will look funny at me. I don't want to put my foot in the sink because people will look funny at me. If we even looked at it from a logical perspective, you see people going out of the restrooms, they don't have any hudud. They don't care. But then Muslims will leave wudu because of fear of what people would say about them. And then leaving will do because you, and then that will cause you to leave the prayer because people will say something about you. Or you're in your cubicle, you don't want to stand up and, and say takbir. So I'll pray at my desk and just do iman. That's for the sick people. Even on the day of battles, the Prophet ﷺ would split the army and have half pray in jama'ah and half face the enemy. And and then we are in situations where we can break off, we can go to a small corner, but we will leave salah, we will leave prayer, because of fear that, oh my boss might say something, I don't get the raise, I don't get the position, I don't get this, I don't get that. We're not depending on Allah when we do that. So the, the lesson, one of the main lessons, is that we have nasr from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمْ اللَّهُ بِبَدْرٍ وَأَنْتُمُ أَذِلَّهَ Allah gave you victory when you were in Badr and you were small in numbers. And so have taqwa of Allah. Then Allah immediately responds that. He says, have taqwa of Allah. That's what you should do. Have taqwa of Allah. Ittaqullah. We praise Allah, alhamdulillah. And we sing some salats of the Prophet wasallam, And then have taqwa of Allah. He didn't say, get, the, get your weapons ready, get everything. No, Allah gives you the victory. Just do your taqwa. Do your part, and then have shukr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man wala. Ya ibadullah, taqullah. O servants of Allah, I advise you and I advise myself to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to remember the Badris on this day. This is the day, the 17th day of Ramadan. And it falls on a Jum'ah. And in that historical day, it fell on a Jum'ah. And on the 17th of Ramadan. Fasting in the extreme heats of the Arabian Peninsula. And they got their nasr from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another victory or another lesson that we get from that victory is how the Prophet ﷺ interacted with his Sahaba. It's beautiful. Even in the way Allah has given, has titled them. He didn't call them his students. 
He didn't call them Talami or Qullabi, the seekers. He called him them Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet And it creates a different dynamic in the relationship. Because yes, they are his students. And yes, they are his followers. And yes, they are his soldiers. And yes, they will obey his commands. But they are his friends, his Sahaba. And Allah told them, وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ And seek counsel from them. Not because the Prophet ﷺ needs them. Because he can get instructions from a ruh al-Ameen, from Jibreel ﷺ, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't need the people. He doesn't need the Sahaba ﷺ. But Allah is teaching us through him in showing that even the people around you, the people that are lower than you, include them in your discussions. Include them in your matter. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted, He could have made the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam beat at Badr by just a miracle, a mu'jizah. Throwing some sands like He did, but that's, those sands could have reached the entire, He could have wiped out the entire army with a handful of sand. He could have wiped out the entire army of Quraysh with one dua. But Allah was making him go through the normal means of what human beings have to go through to teach us. And in that process, he did mushawara, he did counsel from the Sahaba. To the point that even the position they took at the battle, when they got to the wells of Badr, the, the battle is called Badr, it's named after the wells, and the wells are named after the owner of the wells, who was a man named Badr. When they got there, the Prophet ﷺ began establishing camp. One of the Sahaba said, is this position based on wahi or based on ra'i? Is it revelation or is it your opinion? Because if it's revelation, then we'll obey you. But if it's opinion, let's have a discussion. He said, this is just my opinion. And so they said, let's camp beyond the wells so we prevent the other army from getting to the wells. And that was a big part of, their, of the victory because when the Qurayshi armies came, they were thirsty and they needed the water from those wells. And so that helped them in, in, in the victory. But the lesson for us is that we have to do mushawara with those around us. We are not individuals. We are part of an ummah. So we don't go to our households and when our households, the wives run the households without caring what the husband thinks. We're making big decisions and making purchases and making decisions and uh, uh, anything without the husband's consent and information. And the same thing for the husband. He shouldn't be making purchases and decisions and, and things without the, the, the wife's consent. And then even doing mushawara with the children. We're not dictators in our household. To where, no, I have to show the izzah of a Muslim, the izzah of the Badris, and I'm going to establish, I am the Khalifa in my house. That's not the way it works. That's not the way the Prophet وسلم, did it. That's not Abu Bakr's عنه's way. That's not Umar عنه's way. And all of the, the Khulafa al Rashidin ajma'in. They all did mushawa. So in our masajid, in our community centers, we cannot create isolated groups of leadership and leave out the common people. The general people. I shouldn't say common people, just the general, the masses. Even in academia, they, re they realize that one of the most powerful forms of research is participatory action research. Where, research, where you go to the places and you involve the people that you're researching about. You have to involve people. This is part of our nature as human beings. So we have to do mushawara and, and include people in our, our, our decisions that we make. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq and success to follow the Prophet sallallahu in all of his actions and all of his words. And just like the Sahabi who said, if this, is your, if this is revelation, we follow it. And if it's your opinion, we will discuss it with you. When revelation comes to us through the Quran or through the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu we hear and we obey. One of the biggest onslaughts to our community, from the top down, from the scholars down to the average Muslims, and this onslaught is coming from within our ummah and from without of our ummah, question your revelation. Question it. It's open to questioning. We did it. The people of other scriptures says, we did it. We questioned our scriptures. We didn't blindly follow our scriptures. The Jewish community, the people said, we did it. The Christian community said, we did it. The Hindu community said, we did it. Now we want you to do it. We want you to be part of our society now. 
We want you to be involved with our society and help us pass these new laws that go against the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and open up the Quran for interpretation based on our current situation. But we say to those people, like the Sahaba, if this is your wahi, if this is revelation, we obey it and we follow it without question to the point that on the day of Badr, Remember, brothers and sisters, when the Muslims first came to Badr, the Prophet ﷺ had a pact with the Ansar. And the pact was that you would protect me in Medina. So when they went out to Badr, they were going beyond their contract. And the Prophet ﷺ said, the battle is, on the out is outside of Medina. You're not bound to the battle at Badr based on your contract, speaking to the Ansar. You're not bound to the contract. And one of the Sahaba said, O oh Rasulullah, O oh Messenger of Allah, if you ordered us to drive our horses into the oceans, we would have gone. And they went with him on that day of Badr, and on this day, over 1400 years ago, the Ansar were part of that victory. And so we have to have that firm resolution that that Ansari had when he spoke those beautiful words. When people come to us in social media, in emails, Colleagues at work, fellow students, employers, employees, friends, anybody, question your religion, question your revelation. No. We follow this way regardless of what you say. We follow the laws of the land. We don't break the laws of the land. But our religion, we will never compromise on our religion. And if the Prophet ﷺ told us to drive ourselves into the ocean, we would have driven ourselves into the ocean. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq, to follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ outwardly and inwardly, and to give us a portion of the bad, of the nasr, of the victory that he gave to the Muslims at Badr, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove hate, and anger from between our hearts and to bring our hearts together like he brought the hearts of the Ansar and the Muhajirin together and like he brought the hearts of all of the Arab tribes under the Prophet ﷺ together and remove the hate and the anger that they had between them and remove the, the, the petty disputes that they had between them and gave them victory through him Ya Allah give us victory through you and give us victory Ya Allah all over the world and remove the oppressive leaders that are putting, pitting ourselves pitting us against each other Ya Arhamar Rahameen